If you're building a WooCommerce website to sell online, chances are you'll have more than a couple of products to sell. Now making sure that your site visitors can find what they're looking for is a huge consideration. And out of the box, WooCommerce doesn't have any real way of filtering your products. Now, in this first part of the video, I'm gonna show you a free plugin that lets you create a range of filters to help refine your visitors' choices. Then, in the second part of the video, I'm gonna take you through and show you another incredibly useful plugin that lets you add lots of different types of additional fields to any of your products. But first, let's take a look at the options we have for filtering our online store. So we'll be taking a look at Themify Product Filter. Now, this is completely free. There's not any cost to this whatsoever, and I'll put a link to this in the description below so you can check this out and take a look at it for yourself. So this is the plugin we're going to take a look at, and this is the kind of thing that you end up with on your site. So we've got various different kinds of filters. We can have category filters, color filters if we want to, price filters, show sale items, so on and so forth. Now, it doesn't have as much control as some of the more you know, should we say costly ones. But it should be enough for most use cases to get some filtering on your site to make it a little bit easier to find products. Now setting this up couldn't be easier. If we hop over to the dashboard, we've got the plugin installed and what you get is a new section called product filters. Inside there you can list all the filters or you can create a new one. So let's take a look at creating a new one. What I'm going to do is just come in and say add new. And from there we're just going to create our first filter. So we'll call this test filters. Okay, so we've got two different kinds of sections. We've got the overall settings, which is the first section, and below that, the type of filter that we want to build up. Now, you can stack these on top of each other in any order that you want. So let's take a look at that. First of all, you've got your layout. So you can have horizontal or vertical. It's entirely up to you how you'd want to do this. And then you've got a range of different settings to make sure that you get it set up the way that you want to. So things like product counts, product sorting, and so on. So I don't really like to have the product count, so I can say I want to hide that. We can specify the number of products per page and how we want to deal with things like the scrolling. So basic, but it covers most use cases for most people. We'll say add a reset button at the bottom, but you can, if you want to, add a reset button to every single field so you don't have to wipe out the entire filter. You could just take out a specific filter parameter and deal with it that way. You've then got things like scroll to results, which will just scroll down the page to the top of the results, which is quite a nice visual way of doing it, especially if you have a site that has quite a tall header or something. So again, you can configure that to meet your own specific requirements. Then we've got the logical relationship between the taxonomies. Do we want to use and or? So in other words, if we use and, it'll stack each one of these filters on top of each other. So you could say it has to be in a certain category, a certain color, and within a certain price range. Or you can do or. So in other words, it has to meet one of the criteria. So it could be in a specific category or a specific color or within a specific price range. So they're the kind of logical uh, sort of tests you'd have, how the comparison tests kind of thing. So you can choose whichever one you think is going to be viable. I'm going to leave that set to and. Then we've got the results page template. Do we want to show it on the same page? So it'll just filter it out and show all the results on the page that you're currently on. Or do you want to show it on a different page, which will then take you to a second page, and you could then customize that to show the results however you want it to. Entirely up to you. Okay, so we're going to leave those settings as they are. We're going to have it on the same page and so on. Next up, we've got the different parameters that we want to filter against. So let's start off with the category. So we can drag and drop that in, and this now gives us all the options specific to that filter. So what we can do is come up and say category. We can say hide the field title if we want to. We don't want to put something in there, but we want to name it in the back end just so we know what's kind of being done. You can hide that if you want to. You can choose to show the product count if you want. You can choose to show categories and hierarchies. If you're using a hierarchical structure, you can display it in the right order. Do you want to include the children or not? In other words, if you've got categories and subcategories, do you want to display the subcategories? Yes or no, up to you. And then we've got the display type. We can choose whether we want a range of different display types. So if you have something you want to allow people to choose multiple different options, then you could choose the multi-select, or you could choose drop-down radio links or checkbox, up to you. And again, we've got the and or logic that we can choose in there. And we've also got the ordering. So we can order this by the name, the count, or the ID, and then we can choose ascending or descending. Layout, horizontal or vertical, and or the number of columns if you want to do that. And if you're doing something like choosing to display things by color, you could, if you wanted to, choose to display color icons. And we'll take a look at that a little later on when we take a look at adding in colors as an option. 
You can then finally choose to include or exclude categories. So you may have certain categories you don't want to include, then you could exclude those and vice versa. You may only have certain categories you do want to include. So it's up to you. So it gives you that control over what you do and don't want to include. So I'll say I'm happy with all those options. We'll just close that up. And then we can do things like if you want to check only in stock items. So if you manage in stock, you're not dealing with digital products or something, you can choose to have in stock. If we drop that into the structure, you can see this is a very simple option. We can put a name to it and we can just specify whether you want to hide or show the title. There's nothing really much more you can do. It's either in stock or out of stock. We'll get rid of that because I don't want to show that on there. You can choose on sale and much the same as the in stock. You can choose to hide it and specify what the title is if you want to include it. However, if we then move on to something like price, and we can just drag that down and include that. Let's just drop that there. You can see this gives us some more options. So we can just say filter by price. Then we can choose to just display either a slider or a range and what increments we want to use. So you can see we've got slider or range. You can choose whichever you want, and then you can set the parameters accordingly. With the range option, you can include more than just one set of price parameters. I'm going to leave this set to be slider. Steps of one is perfectly fine because you're not dealing with high ticket value items on this particular test website. But obviously, if you were dealing with something that was ranging in thousands, going one at a time would be painful. So you'd probably set it to be something like 100, 500 or 1000 sort of in increments. OK, so that's all there is to the price option. Let's take a look now if we wanted to put something like the colors in. So we'll drag and drop that underneath. And you can see this looks very similar to the category option. There are some differences, but a lot of similarities. So we're going to say colors. And we'll say show product count. We're going to disable that. Then we can choose, like I say, the display type and then the logic, and we can choose the type of order we want. This time, we have custom ordering. Now, in order for this to work, you have to have an option, or should we say a variation set up for colors, otherwise it's not going to have anything to filter against. But what we're going to do is we say display colors as color icons, and then this will open up this new set and display any colors you set up as part of your site, as part of your product lists. So you can see we've got black, blue, brown, and green. So all I can do now is I can choose the background color. So for black, we'll choose black. Text color is just the text color that's going to be overlaid over this little sort of block, this color block. So we're going to set that to be white. And icon text. So if we were using an icon, which you can do, you can upload and select your own images, you could set the icon text color in there. So if you wanted to control exactly how your color chips were going to be displayed, they could be circles, they could be a gradient, they could be anything you want. You can choose to select an image and you can associate that then with each individual color and then you have everything set up the way you want. However, we're going to keep this super simple and just choose colors for this. So I'll choose blue as a color. We'll set our text color to be white and I'll just quickly set all the other colors. I'm not going to be too fussy about getting these spot on color wise. And we'll set that to be white. And finally, we've got green. There we go. So we've set all our colors up. So what we're going to do now is we're going to test this out and see exactly how do we go about placing it as part of our page. So we'll save this. And then what we're going to do is close this down. And you see what that does is it gives us a nice little short code we can use. So we can simply copy that short code. So we're going to choose to copy that. Then we're going to come over to our page setup. So we're going to come into our pages. I'm going to find our online store, which is going to be this option. And we'll edit that with Elementor. Now, you don't need to use Elementor. You can use anything. You can just use WordPress straight out of the box, and you can just drop in a short code into the design that you're using. So it's super simple to do. So what we'll do is we'll get rid of the one that's currently in there, and we'll come over to Elementor, and we'll type in short code. And we'll just drag and drop that into the right-hand column, and then we're simply going to paste in the short code. And you can see that immediately shows us our short code, including any of the different filters and things we've set up. We're going to hit Update on there. We can jump back over into our shop and we'll just refresh this page and we'll just get rid of any filters. We'll clear everything. So this now shows us all of the products. Everything is listed inside there. Now we can say, I only want to see green and we'll filter through to just show the green options. We can adjust the price. You can see between 34 and 45 pounds. So let's just take that down a little bit. That sub filters it and we could filter it down onto the plant type if we had that option available. So you can see if we choose cactus, that disappears because it's not in that category. So it's incredibly simple. Once we finished, we just hit clear, 
and all our products are back. So it's incredibly simple, clean plugin to use. Like I say, it doesn't have tons of options, but it should have enough for most use cases. And if you need more, then obviously there's gonna be other alternatives that you may need to pay for to get that extra functionality. So out of the box, I think this is quite a cool little plugin. So now that we've added some cool filtering options to our site, let's take a look at the second plugin and how we can add in all manner of useful extra fields to our products. So product add-ons for WooCommerce offers a ton of really useful things. We can add extra fields, extra information, extra required information from our users when they purchase something on our site that allows us to get a little bit more creative and offer a more unique experience for our end users. So for example, you may be running a florist and you need to have things like the delivery date they want a particular floral arrangement to be delivered, special instructions, the card message to go on there, those kinds of things. So we're gonna take a look at this and how we can use it. Now there is a pro version available. We're not gonna to touch upon that today. We're gonna to simply stick with the options the free version gives us. So we come back into the dashboard and what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over to our product section and at the bottom, we've got a new entry called custom product add-ons. Now open that up and you can see this now says we've got a product form. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create our first form. So we're gonna say add new form. And from there, we now get a nice, clean, simple interface. Let's just do a couple of different things. We can name it. We can build the form we want to include. And on the right-hand side, we've got all the different types of form items we can pull in. And then we've also got the option on the right-hand side then to choose exactly what categories we associate this with. So for this example, we're going to only associate this with the cactus and plants. So anything that doesn't sort of fit inside that, so clothing and categories and so on, this will not be associated with those. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna call this plant options. Okay, so we've done the first part. Now we need to build our form. So what we can do is we can drag various different elements in. So you can see we've got text fields, text areas, check boxes, date fields, and so on. So let's kick this off with a date field. So this is when it's going to be delivered to us. So we're going to drag and drop that onto our form builder. And you can see now we've got a nice entry that we can start to control exactly what happens. So we can click on the little pencil icon to start editing this. And you can see now we can fine tune and control exactly what goes on with this particular sort of form element. So what we're going to do is we're going to say exactly what we want as part of the label. So we're going to drop in there our information. So we're going to drop and say this is the delivery date and some extra information about it. So other than that, there's not much else we need to do. We can specify it's going to be required. So they have to put a date in. It's up to you whether you want to do that. You may have something that's a delivery only option. You may have something that people can come into the store and purchase it directly from you. I'm going to leave that as not required. So we're going to close that down. So then we're going to add the next option in, which is going to be some special instructions. So what we can do is we're going to drag a text area in this time and drop that underneath. So we've got the same options again. You can see we can delete this, we can edit it, or we can clone or copy it. So let's cl click to edit this. And what we can do now is we can drop in what information we want to say in there. So the label, the first thing we're going to put in there is special instructions. We then got things like placeholder, maximum size, rows, and so on, because we're dealing with a particular field type. However, I'm not going to worry too much about all of that. I'm simply going to take the message we're going to put into a placeholder and just drop that into there. So this just tells people exactly what they've got to do. And again, we can choose whether we want to make this required or not. So let's just say we're happy with that now. So we'll close that down, stop editing that. And we're going to drop in one more different field type. This is going to be the message option. So we're going to do the same again. Text area, drag and drop that in there. Click to edit it. We're going to specify this is required this time. So we can see exactly how that works. And what we can do is we can drop our label in the top. So we'll just put our label inside there. And then we'll just put the information for our placeholder. So everything else can be left alone. If you want to change these things, you can change them. It's entirely up to you. You know, obviously you have full control over all these kinds of different aspects, but you don't need to change things inside there. Okay, so we've created our basic form. We've got three different elements in there, but obviously you can add more as much as you want to put into there. You can add headers in, all those kinds of cool things. So we'll hit publish on there. We'll hop over to our store. We're in the plants and cactus section. So you can see that's exactly where we are. So you've got plants, you can see, and we've got cactus. So if you open up this first plant, you can see there are our current new fields we've added in there. You can see this is set to be a required field, whereas the other two are not. If we click, we can just simply choose the dates we want to use on this. We'll click on the 14th. We want everybody to insert in special instructions, and we'll just say, hello, mum. So we'll add that to our basket. 
and we've now created that. Now that will be stored alongside our order. So whenever we place an order, all that extra information is going to be included with it. And if we come into view our basket, you'll see inside there, there's our extra information. So the delivery date, nothing's included. Well, so I tell a light that date is included in there. The card message is also included. And the same when we go through the procedure checkout and all those kinds of things, all this data will be stored alongside this specific order. So whoever's dealing with it would know exactly what information needs to be done, what needs to be on the card, all those kinds of useful bits of information. Now, if we come back out to our store, we come back in to take a look at, for example, Cactus this time, we can click on there. And you see, again, we get the same lot of options available to us. So we can see now those custom fields have been added and associated with these particular product types. Let's come back out. And what I've done is I've set a different plant. This time the green soil lotus has been set to be clothing. So if we go and take a look in there, we don't have those extra fields included because it's not been, not been associated with this particular product category. So you couldn't get simpler than that. There's tons of options you can use inside this plugin. You can link it through to whatever products you want. You can create as many different custom sets as you want. So you can get really creative with this and have a lot of extra information associated and required as part of purchasing any different type of product on your WooCommerce store. Two absolutely free plugins to provide your visitors with a much better user experience. Now, if you want to know more, all of the applicable links are in the description below. And don't forget to let me know if you've come across any free WooCommerce plugins that you'd recommend. Drop your comments in the comment section below with some links and some information. As always, my name is Paul C. This has been WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.